My name is Romeo Durscher and I am here at the Moore Park office at Atarian. I got challenged today to put together a vector vertical takeoff and landing platform. And that by itself may or may not be challenging, I don't know. I've never done it before, it's my, truly my first time. But not only that, my good friend Trent will be asking me questions during this setup. So let's see how it goes. This case contains the entire aircraft. It's quite amazing to think that all of this here will make a big plane. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with this zipper here. Romeo, do you like multi-rotors or VTOLs? <laughs> well, that's a great, great question to get started. Um, I'm extremely intrigued by VTOL, the vertical takeoff and landing platforms, because I truly believe it will transform the way we utilize this technology. So I guess this is uh, the main piece, the main body part. There's a couple more pieces in here. Let's see. Thermal or RGB? Ah, um, preferably both, just like we have on this one here. So this is the nose cone. Ah, it's called Buzz, like Buzz Aldrin. Huh. Do you prefer a slow drone with a long flight time or a fast drone with a short flight time? There's a time and place for both, that's, that's for sure. Um, I personally enjoy the slower versions because I do uh, a lot of uh, photography and uh, for me, strength is in the stillness. So this is, a, this is a, okay, the nose cone. Okay, here we go. So it has this, these little clip-ons. This is brilliant. Open source or closed? You know, having been around a closed system for quite some time, I am truly enjoying now learning about the advantages of open source. And so I'm fascinated by the concept. So definitely open source. Do you prefer California summers or Zurich winters? <laughs> oh, that's another good one. Um, I don't like to be cold. I grew up in Switzerland and maybe that's why I don't like to be cold as much. So I would say California summers are pretty fantastic, especially up in Northern California. Oh, okay, look, there's more pieces. So this looks like the wing. Aha, uh -huh. must be this side. Do you prefer autonomous or manual flight? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really old school um, because we got started with, with just manual flight. And so I enjoy manual flight because I like to be in control. Uh, to me, manual flight, it is. Okay, this seems to be the extension piece of the wing. Oh yeah, oh, there is this little ledge. This is amazing. I mean, it goes together so well. You said you liked a slow drone. Do you prefer photos or videos? I am definitely a photography person. I'm very visual. I love imagining uh, my shots before they, they happen. And so um, I definitely am a photography person, not so much videography individual. All right, here comes a little challenging piece and uh, I have to figure this one out. I am super intrigued and I think I just figured it out, maybe not. This is, oh, here we go. No, here we go, Romeo. It's just gotta do it the right way. Look at that. There we go. How is it working for a global company? Um, you know, there's, there's challenges but also a lot of advantages bringing in different cultures and mindsets. I totally enjoy that aspect of it. Oh, we, I almost forgot, there's another piece. That is a really cool piece because it measures wind speed. Look at that. How is it working for a global company? Yes, why of course. <laughs> It, it, you know, it brings challenges, different cultures, different languages, different time zones, but all of that can be overcome. Uh, the advantages really are that you bring 
a different understanding, a different knowledge, and a different background to the table. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh -huh. You've got a lot of experience with this. How do drones keep firefighters safe? You know, drone technology has really allowed emergency personnel to do their job slightly differently, with more data, with more information. And knowing what you are getting yourself into allows you immediately to change your approach. And so drones are just one of those many new tools that have become available, but one that provides that overview that can really help save a life or mitigate a risk. And why would a police department need a drone? You know, there's many reasons why. Um, you know, just looking at a search and rescue mission uh, where you quickly can deploy a drone with maybe a thermal camera, that's such a great reason because they don't always have access to a helicopter, for example. So drones, especially small, quick deploy platforms that you can easily carry, um, have a lot of value for law enforcement. But even a larger system like this, that's still in a case that can be you know, transported out into the field provides a lot of opportunities. So um, I'm super excited that we're at a, at a place where we can use this technology. Rocket fuel or lithium ion? Oh, you're uh, referencing my previous um, uh, space flight uh, job that I had with the NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory. I love rockets, I love space exploration, and for that you really need the power to get that spacecraft off the ground. But I also enjoy the lithium batteries because they have really provided us with the ability to quickly and easily power up these multi-rotors and even these VTOL. So this one is a tie. When would you use something like Vector as opposed to a multi-rotor? Ah, uh, that's something that we're trying to really validate over, over the next few uh, weeks and months. But in essence, if we can have this particular platform fly at 120 meters, 400 feet, in large circles over a hazardous material incident, for example, and stream down that data to the incident commander, we can keep situation awareness, while at the same time, they can fly a multi-rotor, a smaller platform, closer to the ground, closer to the incident site, and get additional situation awareness that way. So these two will coexist in the not too distant future during a, a deployment. What are your thoughts on beyond visual line of sight? It's the next evolution, it's the next step, because as you can see, look at this, we have a platform that has a nine feet wingspan. That means we can fly much longer flight times and we have the technology to send a secure stream of data back to up to you know, 15 kilometers, almost 10 miles it will get to the point where very soon we can start taking advantage of beyond visual line of sight. And that is exciting because it will open up more opportunities to use this technology. It will make jobs more safe, more secure, and more effective. So I'm all for it, but we gotta do it the right way. And is remote ID a positive thing for the industry? In my opinion, it absolutely is. It's an enabler also to that beyond visual line of sight concept, but it also provides transparency and also some kind of responsibility for us as a individual operator. Just like we have a license plate on a vehicle, uh, the remote ID also puts a little bit more of a you know, maturity stamp on the entire industry. And what is your favorite adult beverage? <laughs> well, um, my best friend Mark Johnson introduced me to the White Russians and once in a while I do enjoy a White Russian. And uh, after having completed the setup of this vector, before you ran out of questions, uh, I, I may deserve a White Russian tonight. Thanks for answering our questions. It's been a pleasure, here it is. You were able to follow me along on my very first time setting up this platform. 
it is amazing. And all of this came out of this case while being asked questions. So if I can do that, I think anyone can.